Hallo Leute, ich heiße Kassa und ich komme aus Äthiopien. Seit drei Monaten wohne ich hier in Berlin. Sehr cool. Deshalb muss ich Deutsch lernen. Und ihr seht Deutsch für euch. Viel Spaß! Unbelievable this day should come, but we're wrapping up the prefixes today with the last ambivalent prefix, vida and vida. Now, as you can see, it's really two, but since they're so similar, I wanted to do them in the same video because that gives me the chance to also tell you about how to differentiate between the two of them. So just to be clear, both of them are pronounced exactly the same because in both words, the E sound is long. So whether you spell it with an I, E, or just an I, it's vida. But vida with e e, so both letters, means again, which also makes it an adverb. So I can also say, ich habe wieder Vögel am Himmel gesehen. I saw some birds in the sky again. And vida without an e, so just w i d e r, vida, is against. Now you could technically use vida the against vida as an adverb too, but it's kind of antiquated in that usage. There are some rare phrases in which it is used because it might be kind of idiomized, or you want to sound kind of archaic, antiquated, but mostly you will find it as a prefix. And since it's been a while, let me remind you, vida and vida are both ambivalent verbal prefixes, which means that when they are attached to verbs, depending on where the emphasis lies in the word, they can either be trenba or untrennbar, so separable or inseparable. Okay, before we get into today's list of verbs and examples, I want to quickly talk about today's sponsor, Lingoda. Returning viewers are bound to be familiar with Lingoda by now because they are a very loyal sponsor of mine, but in case you're new, let me enlighten you. Lingoda is an online language school based in Berlin and they focus on immersion classes with native speakers. For this, they make sure they have structured learning material at hand, which comes free with any course and as you will see here in a second, as you pick your classes, you always have access to the learning material, whether you have already booked a class for that topic or not. You will always have access to a sort of PowerPoint presentation with all the most important points of that lesson, whether you've booked it or not. And at the end of any course, you can always take a CEFR certificate directly with them, which is the A1 through C2 level system. So you can actually get that certificate in case you need it for a job or some other application. They have individual classes and group classes. Group classes start as low as eight euros per class. And they're very flexible in their scheduling. So even if you're busy, you will find a slot that's available for you because they have 24 seven teaching. They have classes available for German, of course, French, Spanish, English, and they've just revamped their business English section. So if that's interesting to you aside from German, that might also be worth checking out. Right now they're running this great promotion where if you don't want to sign up right away, you can try classes for free first. And that's either three free group classes, Jesus, that's hard to say, three free group classes or one free private class. And if you think you don't need to try it, you've already done it or you want to jump right in, you can use this code to get 25 euros off of your first month. And one note, if you end up using this code and getting the 25 euro discount, you can no longer get the free uh, trial classes promotion. So you have to pick either or. Be sure you remember that. Click the link in the description to get to Lingoda and either sign up with the discount or get your free classes. Now, let's get to the Vida Vida list. We're going to go with Vida again first. Etwas wiedergeben. To play something back or to reproduce something that you heard in sound. So... Somebody tells you something, and then you wiedergeben it to somebody else. Uh, ich weiß nicht, ich glaube, ich kann das gerade nicht richtig wiedergeben. And then there's also jemandem etwas wiedergeben, which is more literal and means to give something back to somebody. Generally, as a note, wieder, while it does mean again, another time, by itself, when combined with verbs, it often has the meaning of back, returning. So wiedergeben says... Somebody gave me something and now I'm giving it back. You will see this in a lot of the other verbs that I have on the list. As evidenced by the next one, wiederkommen. Wiederkommen, to come back. Ich komme wieder. I'll be back. Jemanden oder etwas wiedersehen. 
to see somebody or something again. Sich wiedersehen, so reflexive, sich wiedersehen, means to see each other again. Wann sehen wir uns wieder? When can we see each other again? When can we meet again? If you like folk music, there is a lovely song by the band Faun called Wenn wir uns wiedersehen. Etwas wiederfinden. To find something again, to find something after you have lost it. So to relocate something, basically. Careful though, it does not mean to rediscover. That would be wieder entdecken. Because entdecken means to discover. Wiederhören. Does it really exist as a verb? At least it's not used. Uh, but you will hear it when somebody is on the phone and instead of auf Wiedersehen, which means see you soon or goodbye, means goodbye on the phone. Auf Wiederhören. Because technically you're not seeing the person, you're hearing them. So auf Wiederhören means talk to you soon. Goodbye. Etwas wiederholen. To repeat something. Etwas wiederholen. Aha. Etwas wiederholen. So emphasis on wieder is to get, regain something, to get something back from somebody. So somebody took something from you and you wiederholen it, you get it back. Sich wiederholen means to repeat oneself, either because you keep saying the same thing or because it's a cycle. So, I don't know, the year wiederholt sich. Now the second category is the other wieder, so no e. And remember, as I said, wieder, no e, means against, so push, push back is what wieder is, as you will see from some of these verbs. Etwas oder jemandem widerstehen means to withstand or to resist something. You can resist a temptation. Ich widerstehe dieser Versuchung. I am resisting this temptation. Etwas widerlegen, to disprove or refute something. So you, if you make a point or have an opinion or think something and then I present a fact that disproves that, then I have widerlegt your statement. Etwas widerlegen. Dieser Glaube bestand sehr lange, aber wurde widerlegt. Jemandem widersprechen. To disagree with somebody actively, so to contradict somebody, to say something that contradicts. Da muss ich dir widersprechen. Sich widersprechen means to be contradictory, to conflict. So if you have conflicting evidence, then you would say fact one widerspricht fact two. And hence you could say Diese beiden Fakten, these two facts, widersprechen sich or widersprechen einander. There's also a noun that derives from this, der Widerspruch, which means contradiction or objection. So you can say a Widerspruch exists, da gibt es einen Widerspruch, there's a contradiction there. Or if it's active, if somebody has a Widerspruch, then it's an objection to raise. Can also be in, in a court of law. This is opposed to die Widerrede, which means objection also, but more like back talk. So there's a set phrase that's keine Widerrede, which means, no, I am not going to discuss this, no back talk. Etwas widerrufen means to redact, to retract, to revoke, uh, to take something back, basically to withdraw. But it is often used in a legal context, which is why I also want to mention three nouns that you might come across if you live in Germany, if you ever have any sort of legal dealings. First one is der Widerruf, which is revocation or retraction, so repeal, taking something back. Eh? Um, then there's die Widerrufung, which means abjuration or, gotta check, recantation. Ah, such nice words. And then there's das Widerrufsrecht, which means the right of withdrawal, so your right to uh, withdraw, right of rescission. And then my last word on the list is widerspiegeln, etwas widerspiegeln, because I thought it was important to know that this word is the against wieder, not again, but against, because etwas widerspiegeln means to mirror something or to reflect something, even to reflect on something. So, um, dein Verhalten spiegelt deine Laune wieder. So, you know, your your actions say a lot about your mood. They're really reflecting your mood. Now, you could think that the vida in this word should be the one that means again because it kind of repeats or mirrors something, but really it uses what a mirror really does is image hits and then it gets mirrored back. So that's why it's the vida with one e and not just and not the ee. Generally, let me say one thing. 
Vida Vida is something that native Germans mess up all the time. One, because it always sounds like it's a long E. So a lot of people will just always write E-E because that's a long E. And also because a lot of people aren't constantly aware of that conceptual difference of again and against. So this is something difficult to navigate even or especially for native speakers. Now that's it for today. Before we get to the random word of the week, as always, I want to mention my Patreon. My Patreon is where all of these nice people have decided to support DFE financially, which means they pay a little amount of money for each video that I post you decide how much that is. And depending how much you pledge per month, you get different rewards, uh, including charts and other stuff that I've made for episodes and my grammar scripts, plus something a little extra, you know, just learning materials that are not part of these videos. That also includes for these prefix lists, a longer list with more words, more examples, color coding, etc. So if you need it in writing, then that might be a good way to go. If you want to check that out, click on the link in the description, the one that's also on the screen right now. Thank you once again to everybody in this list for supporting DFA. And now gets, let's get to the random word of the week, which is schwindelig, dizzy, schwindelig, Woo! which falls into the same category of words as kalt and heiß, heiß, heiß. Heiss, of course, when talking about states or how you feel. So you may be aware that when you say, I'm cold, I'm feeling cold, you say, mir ist kalt, with a dativ in German, not ich bin kalt, mir ist kalt. And the same goes for schwindelig. Mir ist schwindelig, I feel dizzy. Oh boy, schwindelig. Relating to that, Deutsch für euch now has an Instagram. That's also now linked in every description of the videos. If you're an Instagram person, you can check that out. I will also po post all random words of the week on there, even in weeks in which I don't make a video. Yay! So you now actually get a random word each week again. So go check that out if you like it. With that, that's finally it from me for today. Bis dann! Tschüss!